February 1st, 1968. During the fierce fighting of the Tet Offensive, Brigadier General Nguyen Ngoc Loan executes the communist Bai Lop. This footage and photo shook the world. It forced the free world to seriously question whether South Vietnam and its American benefactors were fighting a moral war. This video demonstrated the sheer cruelty of the South Vietnamese government that was supposed to stand for freedom. Along with the rest of the Tet Offensive, this event eventually turned the American public against the war. Later, when the general had escaped to the United States after Saigon's fall, Congress representatives Holtzman and Sawyer pushed to have him deported as a war criminal. Around when Luan closed his restaurant to retire in 1991, written on the toilet wall was, We know who you are, you f***er. Even after the war, the American public viewed him as a ruthless murderer of a Vietnamese revolutionary. This story is a lie. Not an intentional lie, but a lie by omission, because it's not the whole story. The whole story has been known in the South Vietnamese community for decades, but it has not really ever entered the English-speaking consciousness, not until very recently. Max Hastings, famed journalist and military historian popular publicly for his World War II and Cold War histories, released Vietnam, an epic tragedy 1945-1975 to in 2018. In it, he writes, Cadre Nguyen Van Lem captured an Arvin officer and his family, then personally cut the throats of Lieutenant Colonel Nguyen Duan, his wife, six children, and 80-year-old mother. Shortly afterwards, on 1st February, Lem fell into the hands of Arvin Rangers. Then, the events of the footage take place. Nguyen Van Lem, or Bai Lop, was a man that was executed. According to South Vietnamese News, and now Max Hastings, Lem was the brutal murderer of an armored officer and his family. All of them were supposed to be enjoying the truce of the Tet New Year holiday, which had never been broken before 1968. They were then executed mercilessly. On February 6, the lieutenant colonel, his wife, and five children were buried. Look at the two coffins on the left and try to continue to say that Bai Lop is not a murderer himself. This was just one of the many cruelties that the communists committed. Max Hastings and Stanley Carnot's Vietnam, A History, both state that they executed around thousands of pro-government civilians in the city of Hue. Unfortunately, the American public just didn't pay attention or care. The anti-war narrative had grown massively in 1968 due to the debt offensive. However, the story still changes significantly. Nguyen Ngoc Luan suddenly turns from a cruel murderer into a morally gray man that avenged the murder of an entire family. He stated to reporter Orniana Falacci, who regarded him as a cold-blooded killer, that Lem wasn't wearing a uniform and I can't respect a man who shoots without wearing a uniform. You kill and you're not recognized. I was filled with rage. Whether he was referring to Duan's family or just the communist killings in general is unclear. Even the photographer, Eddie Adams, who won the Pulitzer Prize for the picture, severely regretted his actions. Throughout his life, he remained in touch with Luan and spoke at his funeral. He later wrote in the time in 1968, Still photographs are the most powerful weapon in the world. People believe them, but photographs do lie, even without manipulation. They are only half-truths. What the photograph didn't say was, What would you do if you were the general at the time, and on that hot day, you caught the so-called bad guy after he blew away one, two, or three American soldiers? seemingly referring to Duan's family. However, it is this older story and narrative, believed by journalists and civilians alike, that has completely split the Vietnam War historical scholarship in two. Modern historians are divided into orthodox and revisionist groups. The orthodox argue the same argument of the last several decades. The war was lost. South Vietnam would have never succeeded. They solidify the understanding of anti-war activists during the war and primarily use American documents and reporting, like the Pentagon Papers. Revisionists review South Vietnamese sources and refocus on other American sources. They argue that the war was starting to see results and South Vietnam had roughly attained stability during Vietnamization. Massive battles such as Quang Tri, Con Tum, Thuong Duc, and Suan Lop, which had largely been minimized, ignored, or glossed over by Orthodox historians, have been brought to the forefront of their scholarship. For instance, Carnot's book, published in 1983, only gives the Easter Offensive around 6 pages out of 670 pages. 
Hastings' book, however, expands this to two whole chapters, correctly stating that 1972 witnessed the largest battles of the entire conflict. All arms clashes on a scale and of an intensity dwarfing those of 1968. He reflects on older histories, saying that they view everything that happened beyond debt 1968 as aftermath. The war's events have been reanalyzed and rescaled into the rest of the war. Like the execution photo, it seems that only half the war has been analyzed. The historian's debates continue, however. Ed Moisey is convinced that the entire story of Lem murdering the Duan family is a post-war invention, and that the truth will never be known. The Vietnam War timeline of events still remains questionable and argued over. However, whether or not Lem was the one that killed this family, they still remain slaughtered by communist revolutionaries. That fact does not change. But in this mess of war, cruelty, half-stories, competing narratives, political intrigue, historical revisionism, there is at least some sort of positive end. The general, Luan, may have died miserably, but an admiral took his place. In the family that was killed, one of the children miraculously survived, even after getting shot in the arm, thigh, and skull. He was then raised by his uncle, a Vietnam Air Force colonel, until 1975, when they fled to the United States. On October 10th, 2019, Nguyen Tu Huan was promoted to Rear Admiral. He followed in his father's footsteps.